Welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty. This one going out to Niner fans, near, far, NFL fans, sports fans. You're all welcome here. Today we are breaking down the week 13 loss of the 49ers to the Seattle Seahawks. Really a heartbreaking game for the 49ers. So I actually had a whole bunch of notes ready for this, but you know what? I'm just going to throw that aside because I just want to shoot from the hip. So this game was a typical 49ers versus Seahawks game in recent years where we have maybe our worst game of the year and the Seahawks managed to step up and have their best game of the year against the 49ers. Now, this game really was a tale of two halves. What I mean by that is the first 28 minutes of the game ultimately went really, really well for the 49ers. And then the last 32 minutes, just dreadful, just dreadful. So a couple things to point out. Jimmy Garoppolo was not good in this game at all. Um, he had a couple of big time drives. He had a couple of nice throws, like the first touchdown to Kittle was awesome. And that very last drive up until we got into the first and goal, you know, I think, uh, you know, that whole uh, final drive, he played pretty darn well. But outside of that, he was off, um, missed open guys, and the Seattle defense really confused Jimmy Garoppolo. The run game was actually quite ineffective. I think um, you have to give Seattle a lot of credit for how they defended the run because Mitchell had been coming off a huge game against Minnesota. Um, but Seattle really sold out to stop the run. And this was a game where we really, really missed Debo Samuel. Just having an extra threat on the outside, aside from Brandon Ayuk. Um, you know, Seattle just loaded the box. They were like, Jimmy Garoppolo, you beat us. And um, he didn't. So, but if we look at the first half, you know, the offense was actually moving the ball pretty well. You know, of course, uh, we had that first touchdown pass to Kittle was granted a really good pass. Then with two minutes left in the first half, uh, Garoppolo on a you know fake handoff comes out, dumps it off to Kittle, and then Kittle just makes like a ridiculous play along the sidelines, kind of like tiptoes his way along the sidelines, runs it in for a touchdown. Great score. Like Kittle, that was amazing and just a huge athletic play. But from that point on, the offense was essentially dreadful for the rest of the game. When Kittle scored that touchdown, the score was 23 after Gold missed the extra point, 23 to 14. The Niners did not score a single point in the second half. Um, and it was just a bunch of blunders, um, a bunch of self-inflicted wounds. So it was really, really frustrating to watch, really frustrating. So, you know, after Kittle's touchdown, for some reason, and our special teams has been garbage for a couple of weeks now. And Richard Hightower today, today's Wednesday, came out and basically said, it's my fault, which, I mean, I don't want to say it's fully his fault, but he has to carry a lot of responsibility for how poor the special teams has been the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, ever since uh, Kittle's touchdown, everything went downhill. So we kicked the ball off. They return it to like the 35, 40 yard line. There's still a minute 40 left. Seattle ends up scoring a touchdown right before halftime. Thanks in part to guys like Arden Key and Omenahu having a couple of uh, flags, um, which really extended Seattle's drives. And um, that was kind of like that drive was almost like a microcosm of the game where we just hurt ourselves all the way along. Now, here's the crazy thing is that despite all of our blunders, and there were plenty of them, Garoppolo, two bad interceptions, um, Travis Benjamin fumbling it on special teams, <sighs> another couple of fumbles, who else fumbled? There was another fumble in the game as well. Um, so just a, you know, just a cacophony of errors by the 49ers. But at the end of the day, you know, we still had a chance to, you know, tie and or win the game with like seconds left um and honestly who can we thank for that well i'm gonna give almost all of the credit to the 49ers defense wow what a performance huh weird to think that when you see the opponent score 30 points and you're like wow the defense played really well well let's not forget the special teams of the 49ers literally gave the seahawks seven points on that fake punt 
And then the defense was put in so many bad positions throughout the game. Garoppolo's interception, Travis Benjamin's fumble, Garoppolo's actually two interceptions, Travis Benjamin's fumble. We put ourselves, like the defense, under a lot of stress, and they responded really well. The one drive, and I kind of just mentioned it a little bit ago, where it didn't go well was right before halftime, where, yeah, Arden Key, that was definitely a roughing the passer. But then the Omenahu one, I'm like... Oh, I don't like that call. You know, I don't like that call. But other than that, the defense was great. We had, you know, a couple of big turnovers right on the goal line where um, Wilson hit Gerald Everett. He kind of bobbled it, hit off his foot, and K1 Williams was right there. Not only that, at the very end of the game where Seattle was on our, like, two-yard line, uh, I think it was Al Shire, was it, who forced the fumble? Or he rec- I think then Dante Johnson came up with it, and that still gave us a chance at the end of the day. Um, but overall, wow, we have to give credit to the defense because they kept us in this game. And that was missing, arguably, our second-best defensive player in Fred Warner. Emmanuel Mosley went out early, so I give D'Amico Ryans a huge amount of credit, and then guys like Aziz Alshire were incredible throughout the game. He is fast becoming an absolute star in this league, um, who may end up making a guy like Dre Greenlaw ultimately you know, disposable. Then we got to give, like, the D-line played pretty darn well. Bosa had a big sack. Arden Key and I think Al Shire split a sack. So in the last four games, Arden Key has three and a half sacks. Omenahu was back there. Jordan Willis actually got in there for a big sack. And overall, the cornerbacks, you know, outside of a couple of plays here and there, like, they didn't play terribly. Um, Josh Norman, you know, although he got beat a couple of times, those times he got beat weren't really the ones that cost us. Um, I mean, you could maybe argue when Russell Wilson hit... Um, Tyler Lockett in the end zone that you could be like, well, Josh Norman was on the coverage. But honestly, I think he had pretty darn good coverage. The Niners just blitzed a whole heck of a lot of people and they didn't get any pressure on Wilson on that play. So, you know, great play by the offense as opposed to Norman making a bad play. Overall, though, you know, you know and you guys saw on the stream, just a really up and down game. Like the first five or ten minutes of the game, so much happened where it was like Trenton Cannon got hurt. We stop them for a three and out. Then they score in the special teams touchdown. Then we take it down, get a touchdown, and then there's turnovers, and it's just, it was just a mess. Um, but overall, I think we really have to put this on the offense and the special teams, you know? And when I say put it on the offense, I'm basically putting that on um, Jimmy Garoppolo because he had two bad interceptions. And then the entire third quarter was just maybe the third, most of the third and fourth quarter was just the ugliest offense I've seen in a long time where we could get nothing going, basically. So you could maybe argue somewhat on Shanahan. Um, The running game was largely ineffective. And at the end of the day, I just think that this game showed us really how important Debo Samuel is to the 49ers with his versatility and his just playmaking ability he causes defenses to have to think so much and you know defend in so many different ways and he's just such a huge mismatch for any defense that without him out there um, it was pretty tough so here's the thing I mean obviously it's a bummer that we lost the game however when I think back at it like look we're six and six we still have that wild card spot We have a huge game coming up this week. Um, We're for sure getting Fred Warner back this week. And then maybe as of Wednesday, Debo Samuel hasn't practiced. However, they're thinking that he will practice tomorrow on Thursday. So hopefully that's a good sign that he can go against Cincinnati. But yeah, you know, it was a tough loss. You know, we were missing, you know, again, arguably our best player on offense and then our second best player on defense. And Seattle, going into Seattle is always a tough place to play. But I think the most frustrating thing is the fact that we brought this on ourselves. You know, the special teams was garbage. Um, The offense was, again, you know, they had moments, but, you know, for the second half were largely ineffective with some brutal blunders. Um... So at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. Got to take the loss. Got to learn from it. Hopefully what the 49ers can do here is what they did after the Arizona game earlier this year. The Arizona game where Colt McCoy ripped us a new one um, where we can bounce back and have a big, big statement win against Cincinnati. And then, hey, after that, we have some very winnable games coming up, you know, in our last um Four games after Cincinnati, I mean, two of the games, we're going to have the Falcons, we're going to have the Texans, we're also going to have the Rams, and we have their number. Then we also are going to be going up against Geezer's uh, Tennessee Titans, who, 
Tennessee on any given day, you never know what kind of Titans are going to show up. So um, after Cincinnati, the schedule does get a lot more favorable. Um, if we can bounce back and have a big game against Cincinnati, get the big win, I feel like we're going to be feeling really confident going into the final part of the season. But yeah, overall, just a, a really frustrating game to watch against uh, Seattle. You know, it seems like Trenton Cannon is going to ultimately is going to be fine, which is good news. Um, the bummer is that losing Emmanuel Mosley to a high ankle sprain, that's going to put him out for a few weeks. And so it's just going to put a lot more pressure on guys like Josh Norman, rookies Diamador Lenore, Ambry Thomas, K1 Williams. Um, but obviously the, the positive news is going to be that Fred Warner looks like he's going to be back. So having two studs at linebacker and Fred Warner and Al Shire right there, that's really good news. And hopefully we'll see some more. Um, guys getting healthy as well in the D line, like maybe Maurice Hurst, maybe D Ford. That would be great to see to make up for missing our number one cornerback in Mosley. But overall, you know, I really want to hear your guys' thoughts on the game. Um, I tried to, I was going to have a whole breakdown of stats and everything, and then I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to shoot from the hip and tell it how it is and how frustrating it was to watch that game. But I was glad we had such great um, participation. Uh, from the viewers on the stream so thank you everyone for coming out for the stream it was by far my most successful one thank you for all the new subscribers you know and uh, checking out the content feel free to check out the videos and of course with this one if you like if you subscribe if you come across this video that would be awesome um, there's going to be you know of course more uh, streaming more games coming up uh, towards the rest of the season which will be a lot of fun and um, I guess at this point all there's left to say is we're on to Cincinnati. It's nothing about the past, nothing about the future. It's right now we're preparing for Cincinnati. Okay. And then you know what? We're going to catch you on the flip side.